care. So this patient, given his age of 48, was treated pretty quickly. You know, these are patients that we want to get into the hospital and start chemotherapy as soon as we know and have the diagnosis. This patient was found to have an acute myeloid leukemia. Again, it was not a core binding factor leukemia. It had trisomy 8, and uh, the mutation panel was an IDH2 positive status. So this patient underwent induction chemotherapy with 7 and 3, or 7 days of cytarabine and 3 days of donorubicin. And unfortunately, he did not respond to this therapy and had primary refractory disease. At this point, when a patient like this has not responded to induction chemotherapy, their prognosis is um, not good, as everybody is aware of. And in this scenario, um, because he had the IDH2 mutation being positive, options for patients in this scenario we'll talk about in the next number of questions. Uh, but this patient went on to receive an 100 milligrams by mouth once a day. He tolerated that therapy very well, um, was able to um, resume therapy as an outpatient, was able to do better in terms of his physical activities once discharged from the hospital, and also had um, improved appetite, was able to improve his performance status just getting out of the hospital and recovering from the intensive chemotherapy. A little bit more about how he did on this uh, enositinib after about um, two months on therapy he eventually showed evidence of stable disease he had improvement of his neutrophil count up to 1000 and um, in addition he um, became transfusion independent after about another month uh, about three months of therapy. Um, this patient then went on to have um, even more uh, response to this therapy and um, had decrease in his blast count um, as evidenced by a bone marrow biopsy. Uh, this bone marrow biopsy demonstrated that he had 15% blasts in the bone marrow and um, again, stabilization of his disease. Shortly thereafter, um, this patient went on to have um, symptoms of hypoxia and shortness of breath, and he was then evaluated with a chest X-ray that showed diffuse pulmonary infiltrates. Um, he also manifested other symptoms, such as a fever, uh, during that time. These symptoms are consistent with uh, differentiation syndrome, and as a result of that, he was started on dexamethasone 10 milligrams twice a day by mouth with resolution of his symptoms after about one week of time. He remained on enositinib um, without difficulty. Notably though, he had an elevation in his total bilirubin at 1.9, and um, we'll talk a little bit more about how that was managed. Subsequently, at six months of therapy, he ended up having a repeat bone marrow biopsy, and at that time he was in complete remission with 2% blasts and had normalization of his neutrophil count, his hemoglobin, and his platelet count. Uh, at that time, reevaluation of the status of his IDH2 was also performed by next generation sequencing and it was found that the presence of IDH2 was still there. Touching base about his total bilirubin, now that we've talked a little bit about his um, resolution and complete remission, uh, this was managed just by monitoring. The bilirubin can be elevated because of inhibition of the UGT1A1 enzyme by enositinib, and because his total bilirubin remained less than two or three times normal, he was able to continue on enositinib and had no other abnormalities with AST or ALT that were concurrent with that. Thus, it was safe to continue him on that therapy and he had no um, adverse events from that. This is a young patient, 48 years old, that had primary refractory disease to standard induction chemotherapy. For patients in this age range, we typically would start with a clinical trial in a primary refractory disease setting. For some patients that have controlled disease, we would even consider a bone marrow transplant in that setting and not even use other therapy. Uh, and in the past, or even now, if patients don't have an IDH2 mutation, 
in that setting, you might consider going straight to a bone marrow transplant in a primary refractory disease setting, especially if there has been some response but not complete uh, remission for those patients. Alternatively, um, we can often use induction chemotherapy for those patients or induction therapy combined with um, other novel therapies. So yes, clinical trials are an option for patients that are this young that have primary refractory disease, primarily because their performance status is usually um, excellent and they can tolerate uh, novel therapies. For this particular patient, enacitinib was used as a single agent given the data that we know about um, for patients that um, have relapsed refractory AML. Um, it was mostly relapsed refractory patients that were evaluated uh, that we can speak to, but in this particular scenario, he benefited from being on this medication and had complete remission from this therapy. Um, we didn't talk about this, but he ended up going forth to a bone marrow transplant after he obtained a complete remission.